Today I'm gonna to share with you how to balance faith and business and why you don't have to sell out to be successful in business. And in fact, why you shouldn't sell out if you really wanna be successful. Now, before we move forward, my name is Ralph, founder of Kingdom Business Systems, where we make kingdom business simple. If you'd like more information, you can check the description box below. But as for now, we're gonna get right to it. You know, the more time I spend talking to people, whether it be in my coaching programs, through social media, or people that I just happen to meet out on the street, there is this false dichotomy that in order to be successful in business, you have to put your faith to the side or to be successful in your faith, you have to stay away from business or you can't be too successful because then you're considered to be greedy. And I believe a lot of why people are a little bit reluctant or confused is because there's just so much nonsense out there that people are attempting to associate with the Bible that isn't biblical at all. In fact, there are many examples of successful entrepreneurs in the Bible. In fact, in the 13th chapter of Genesis, Abraham is described as a trader. In the fourth chapter of Matthew, Peter is a fisherman. In Proverbs chapter 31, the virtuous woman was highlighted for selling garments in the marketplace. She was a provider to traders. The Apostle Paul in the 16th chapter of Acts went to Macedonia to preach, and one of the groups that he preached to was a group of women. Among those was a woman named Lydia. She was known for selling purple cloth, and she was very successful because purple cloth was highly valuable uh, and, and very expensive at the time. There are many characteristics, regardless of what you believe or what faith you ascribe to, if at all, that are valuable in the marketplace. Now, the Bible highlights them in Galatians 5 as the fruits of the Spirit. In another faith, may be highlighted some other way, but they're all pretty consistent. For example, people want to do business with people that they can trust. They're honest. They are kind. They're faithful. They deliver what they say they're going to deliver. They provide value. They have self-control. You don't want to do business with someone who's one way today and another way tomorrow. When you, first of all, run a business as a person of faith, there are certain tactics, there are certain industries, certain opportunities that are just gonna be off limits. Now they may be legal, but there are things that we can do that we have to be careful of that can create confusion, that can cause people to wonder what you truly believe. And in everything we do, our first responsibility is to be a light, is to be a representative of God. So anything that we do that could damage our ability to represent God adequately is something we should stay away from. And that's going to shrink the marketplace substantially because you can't be in it just to make a lot of money or to jump on the next shiny object that everyone seems to be you know, focused on and that seems to be popular in the marketplace, on social media and other places. The second thing I'd like for you to consider is whether entrepreneurship is a part of your purpose in the first place. Because although it's glorified and it may seem to be attractive, it's a lot of work and it's not for everyone. Everyone ain't built to be an entrepreneur. It is tough. You may have seen some of the memes or heard people say that entrepreneurship is the only endeavor where you're willing to work 80 hours a week for yourself to avoid working 40 hours a week for someone else. And I can personally attest that that is very true. I work harder and longer hours now trying to build what God has given me to build than I ever did back when I was working for someone else. And yes, the amount of time that I'm spending is starting to come down because I'm, I'm building substantial momentum, but it is hard. And you're not gonna be fulfilled as a person if you're not doing what you were uniquely created to do. Jeremiah 1.5 talks about that, that we were all born with a purpose. And even though I put a lot into this, you know, it's a labor of love. I don't get sick of it. In fact, even when I'm exhausted, I look forward to getting up the next day and doing it again. And that's how I know it's aligned with my purpose. There's such a myth out there that talks about, you know, if you make too much money, then that's going to lead to sin. And, you know, money makes you backslide and just dumb stuff. I'm just going to say it. It's just dumb things that people say when money is nothing more than a multiplier of what you are. If you're mean, cheap, selfish, stingy, you don't have to have a lot of money to do that. The only reason that it can be on display is when you have a lot of money, then you have a lot more options. And many of those options are public. They're, they, you can buy things that make you appear ostentatious and people around you begin to notice the extent of your greed, the extent of your selfishness. So it's not about money making you do this or do that because I know plenty of people who are very wealthy, who are some of the most generous people that I've ever met. They are willing to give, they're willing to pour into others. 
And that's really the crux of the issue. It's not just about making enough to where you have enough because the Bible does say that whatsoever you do, do it with all your might. It doesn't say to do it just until you have enough. If you get to the point where you have everything you need and some of your wants and you have more money than give because it ain't just about you. There are people who are hungry. There are people who don't know where they're going to sleep tonight. There are people who have lots of needs in this world that people who have a surplus can pour into and help and serve. We live in a day and time where the world is constantly shifting. There's this mythical uh, committee out there, you know, in the States, we call it political correctness, where today, this is what you say, this is what you do, this is what you better not do, then three months from now, no, we're not saying that anymore, we're not doing that anymore, now you have to say this, now you have to do this, now you have to do that. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to build my life on something that constantly shifts. And principles don't shift. And this is why you don't have to, it's not a zero-sum game between business and faith. If you apply the principles of business, which don't change, and apply the principles of faith that don't change, you're setting yourself up to be wildly successful. You don't have to compromise, okay? In fact, you're gonna do better if you don't sell out, okay? You're, not, you're gonna be able to live with yourself if you don't sell out, and over the long term, you may take some bumps and bruises and some punches, some blows, but ultimately, you're gonna come through the fire, you're gonna stand, you're gonna be successful, and people around you are gonna be blessed because of it. So once again, this is Ralph with Kingdom Business Systems, where we make Kingdom Business simple. I hope you've been blessed by this. Please be sure to subscribe, give this video a like, and share with someone that needs to hear it. Always remember that faith plus works equals success. And I'll see you next time. Take care. God bless.